Hammer time! Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much A Brew About Nothing, and one of my favorite developments in Magic over the last few months has been Hammer Time becoming a legitimate modern deck. If you look at the history of Hammer Time, we played Hammer Time on Budget Magic right after Corset 2020 released, and at that time, Hammer Time, everyone thought it was kind of a meme, like, yeah, sure, you can sometimes jake people out on turn two, but it's weird. Is Colossus Hammer actually like a real card people can play? Over the course of the past almost two years since Colossus Hammer released, started off as a meme, developed into stuff that some other people were like kind of playing under the radar. Occasionally someone would do something cool with it on Magic Online. And now in just the last month, a few weeks, Hammer Time has suddenly become the rage in the modern format where it might actually be a legitimate top tier deck as hilarious as that is. And I just love that this meme deck, thanks to the community brewing and developing and tuning, has went from essentially a joke into essentially one of the best decks perhaps in the entire modern format so today we're playing the newest best most evolved version of the hammer time deck and oh man this is just one of my favorite decks to play this is pure steel hammer time a deck that trades in a little bit of the memeish turn to kill potential from the old versions of the deck for some more late game resilience thanks to pure steel paladin thanks to Loris and mishra's bobble so we're not as likely to jank our opponent out on turn two. It's still possible, but not as likely. However, we're much better able to play a real game of magic. If things go wrong and our first creature dies or our first hammer gets thought seized, we're not just drawing dead and doing nothing for the rest of the game. We actually have a legitimate shot to win from there. So we're going to try out the newest and probably best version of Hammer Time today, Pure Steel Hammer Time. Take it through a league. See if Hammer Time is finally ready for the big stage in modern. So let's talk about the deck. Jump right into the game starting with the hammer itself. So Colossus Hammer, really unique equipment. One mana gives the equip creature plus 10 plus 10. It does lose flying, which is a bit of a drawback. The problem is the equip cost of hammer is eight mana. So equipping it fairly is ridiculously expensive. The idea of hammer time is to get around this equip cost and be able to get Colossus Hammer on a creature as early as turn number two. So uh, first off, we have some backup hammers as well, or backup equipment. Cranial Plating is literally a backup hammer. You'll see as we talk about this deck, we kind of have an art effect sub theme because of pure steel paladin so cranial plating while it's probably not going to give plus 10 most of the time it is definitely able to give plus five uh, very easily and we can move it around cheaply unlike glasses hammer meanwhile shadow sphere gives us trample to get through blockers and also gives us lifelink to swing the race against aggro like one hit with a glasses hammer creature with a shadow sphere is probably just going to be a deck like burn or other aggro decks essentially by itself even if it's not lethal right away just gaining the a huge mass of life is going to be enough to put the game away. Then we have our Finding Colossus Hammer card. Steel Shaper Gift, just one mana, tutor and equipment to your hand. Usually Colossus Hammer, sometime one of our backup plans. Stoneforge Mystic, kind of the same deal. Two mana creature that tutors up an equipment and can even cheat an equipment into play. Although that's not a super valuable ability unless we're playing around counters. Because our equipment's so cheap to cast, we mostly are just using Stoneforge as a tutor, but occasionally in counter matchups, we are using it to cheat equipment into play as well. Then we have our cards to equip Colossus Hammer. One of them's an old favorite, Sigarda's Aid. So Sigarda's Aid lets us flash auras and equipment and equips them for free when they come into play. So this means we can go turn one creature, turn two Sigarda's Aid, Colossus Hammer, equip the hammer, smash you with that creature, hitting you for like 11 damage. One of the weird things about this deck, as we talked about before, is we're not playing one mana double strike creatures. So we're not really janking opponents out on turn two very often. Sometimes if we have two hammers, it happens. But really, we're more of like a turn three-ish deck with this build of hammer time the reason we can get away with being slower is pure steel paladin and pure steel paladin explains a lot about the choices in this deck so pure steel draws a card when equipment comes into play so it uh, gives us some card advantage to go long and as long as we have three artifacts we can equip things for free and our deck has a bunch of artifacts you will see along with our equipment we have a bunch of other artifacts to turn on pure steel quickly and then the upside of pure steel is we can just move our equipment around however we want to we can put it on a creature that's not something 
Lightning Sake. We can put him on Pure Steel to protect it. So very good engine piece for this deck, giving us card advantage to go long and free equips. Then we have the rest of our creatures. So when it comes to putting Colossus Hammer on something, we can go on Stoneforge. We can go on our Pure Steel. Doesn't really matter. But our cheapest threats are attack you on turn two with Colossus Hammer threats. Our Med Knight and Ornithopter, just zero mana artifact creatures, which again, not only are giving us creatures to wear the hammer, but are also upping our artifact count for Pure Steel Paladin. And then if we do need to one-shot kill our opponent, we still have Ink Moth Nexus, which hits for 11, in fact, if we can get in with Colossus Hammer, which just kills the opponent in one attack. So that's kind of our one-shot kill, either two hammers on a creature or one hammer on the Ink Moth Nexus. Otherwise, the other way this deck goes long is Mistress Bobble, another cheap artifact to turn on Pure Steel, combined with our companion Luris. Once we get Luris going, we can just bobble every turn to draw an extra card for free. Really good late game card advantage plan. We can even unearth our Luris if it dies, or our Pure Steel, or our Stoneforge Mystic, whatever. Springleaf Drum, a little bit of acceleration, another cheap artifact to turn on Pure Steel Paladin. As far as the mana base, we talked about Ink Moth. Otherwise, Basic Lands, Fetch Lands, Shock Lands, Silent Clearing is another way to draw some cards in the late game. And in the sideboard, we got our Luris. We got some protection creatures. Bird to Forge Tender for red decks. Oriac Champion, really good against Death Shadow decks with pro black and red, making it so we can put our hammer on there, not get blocked by our opponent's stuff or block our opponent's stuff for days. Thought Seize, Path, Pithing Needle for interaction, Tormod Script for graveyards, Disenchant to get rid of artifacts and enchantments, and that is the new and improved and possibly even tier one Pure Steel Hammer Time for Modern. So, Let's jump into some games, see if we can hammer time some fools. How good is this deck? We're going to find out. Thanks for watching, enjoy the league, and I will talk to you soon. Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and you can pre-order all the Keldheim cards you need by heading over to CardKingdom.com. All right, much ado about nothing time, and this week we are <laughs> hammering in modern. This time with the newest, most improved, hopefully build of the deck. Oh man, I just I love Hammer Time. Hammer Time is one of my favorite archetypes, and seeing it go from a meme back when we were playing on Budget Magic right after what, M20 released a couple of years ago to now an actual like legitimate modern deck has been one of my favorite things. And this hand actually looks pretty sweet. We'll see what interaction our opponent has, but in theory we have artifact, artifact, artifact on turn one into pure steel, equip ornithopter, hit you on turn two. Oh my God, and cigar to Zade. Uh, so play the land play Colossus Hammer, Ornithopter, Mishra's Bobble, go. I mean, this this looks like a good draw. Pure Steel is probably the biggest new addition to the deck. We'll see if our opponent can just counter it. That would make me sad. Uh, so, well, land and Pure Steel. I mean, you don't play Hammer Time to be afraid of removal encounters. Opponent Ops, and oh my goodness, okay, okay. Well, let's see if they can storm off this turn. There's Pierce Deal. Hammer on Ornithopter. Might as well play the Mem Knight as well, I guess. Hit you for 10? Okay, well, let's see if our opponent can storm off. We are presenting lethal. Do we want to move the hammer to the Pierce Deal? Probably. And all right, yeah, your go, opponent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, don't storm us, don't storm us. Oh, they're going to try. I mean, they got to try. Metamorphose. And dead! <laughs> All right. That is the beauty of hammer time. <laughs> Pony storming on the play, and uh, we're just too fast, too quick. All right, so what do we have that's good against Storm? Um, hmm. So I think we can go down the Unearths. Cards that we want. Thought Seize is good. Path to Exile might be necessary to deal with the first, like, Brawl slash Electromancer. Possibly Tormod's Crypt. What do we go down to make room for this? We can probably go down the Cranial Plating. Cranial Plating, I think, is better when the game goes long and you want an equipment that you can, like, move around. But against Storm, I think what happened that game is what we're trying to do. We're, we're essentially just trying to out-goldfish Storm because they can win pretty quickly, too. So we just want to be faster, but maybe add a little bit of disruption. What else can we actually cut, though? That's the problem with this deck, is it's actually pretty tight. We have eight ways to equip a hammer. We have eight ways to find a hammer. We have hammer and shadow spear, 
as our equipment. And I don't think we can cut the Shadow Spear because of Trample being somewhat important. Maybe we could get away with that. I guess we could probably cut a couple, hmm, maybe like two Springleaf Drums and a Bobble? Yeah, let's try it like that. That does lower our artifact count a bit, although we did bring in two Tormod Crypts, so maybe we're fine. But really, I mean, I think this is just a straight up, straight up Goldfish race if our opponent really is storming. Hmm. Celestian can find a hammer, and it has a one-shot kill with Springleaf Draw, with a Ink Moth Nexus, and mana from Springleaf Drum, but we can't equip a hammer. I think we mulligan. Well, all right, this will keep. We will put a Silent Clearing to the bottom. So this hand needs the hammer, but we do have a Tormod's Crypt, which is good against Storm. So, well, let's Memnite. Silent Clearing. Actually, we should have played, shouldn't we? Yeah, we spent a life for no reason. Sigarda's Aid. Mishra's Bobble. Tormod's Crypt. Memnite. And, all right. Our hand is on the battlefield. Can we find the hammer fast enough? Opponent it. Untaps. Mountain. Well, let's Bobble. Take a peek. Pathway on top. Well, we get to draw two. Hmm. The only problem here is opponent does have removal up, potentially. Go to combat, attack. Ugh. So we can try to hammer. I think we wait. Let's just pass. We would prefer our opponent to tap down first. And it's not like hammer immediately wins us the game anyway. There's the pathway. There's Electromancer. Opponent passing. Well, go to combat. Attack. Well, now we gotta go for it. They could still have the bolt, but we do need to try to kill Electromancer. Yeah, all right. So that is, that's not good. Well, now we could just be dead. Play a bobble, play an ornithopter. All right, if you can storm, you can storm. Yeah, opponent had the interaction this game. Opponent ops. I mean, that's why Amber Time is really good at, is putting opponents to the test really quickly. Sometimes they have the answer and you lose. Other times they do not have the answer and uh, you kill them pretty quick. Now our hammer's on the battlefield though, so we need another hammer or we need a pure steel. And we would prefer our opponent to not storm off and kill us, but it looks, so oh, they're going for it, yeah. Ritual, passed in flames. Well, I guess this is where we uh, exile the graveyard. Okay, opponent gets another ritual with the trigger on the stack and a mana morphos. Well, let's see how incredibly, wow! Wow, 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 wow! Okay, those were, uh, those were good draws to hit a bunch of instant speed cantrips. Oh my goodness. Whoo! Wow, those are really good. Really good draws from uh, from the Storm deck. Metamorphos, draw more cards. And our opponent, because of those top decks, might actually just win this turn. Yeah, there's a Gifts, and uh, yeah, we will scoop it up. All right, that was something that I don't think I'd ever seen before. Huh, that was, that was crazy. That was some crazy running. Well, this time we're on the play, finally. Last game, our opponent had things kind of work out perfectly. They had the removal spell, and then they chained together instant speed cards somehow with the <laughs> past and flames out of the stack, which is kind of crazy. I mean, I assume they had the ritual in Manamorphos in hand, but then they also hit the opt off of the Manamorphos to give them higher storm count and get deeper in their deck and more cards to flashback. So, so I mean, in some sense, they're probably going to have something to do there, but they got more than you would have expected. Yeah, I don't know about this. I don't know how this matchup goes. Well, let's see if we can win very quickly and hope they don't have a bolt. We don't have that much disruption is the biggest issue. Well, all right, we can go for it. And we got a path this time, which is sweet. Well, Marsh Flats, crack it. Get a Godless Shrine untapped. Play Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, Memnite. Tap the Ornithopter, play Cigarda's Aid, pass the turn. Okay, just play a cantrip. Just play a, okay, yes, 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 yes. Well, do they have a Force Negation? That is the next question. <laughs> oh, it's another, that's, oh wait, do we win? Oh my God, I think we literally win here. Okay, uh, so, let's see if they have Force Negation. Uh, Colossus Hammer, put it on Ornithopter, 
Is this a literal turn two kill? Tap Memnite, Colossus Hammer, also on Ornithopter. The best Ornithopter of all time? <laughs> nice try, Storm. Nice try, Storm. Nice try, Storm. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. This, this build of Hammer Time. I, so I know Hammer Time is a turn two kill deck, but you gotta remember, the most current build that we're playing, it's not nearly as much of an all-in turn two kill deck as the past builds of Hammer Time that we played. We're not playing like Core Duelist, the other like one mana double strikers. So it's actually very unlikely. Like this is the way we can get a turn two kill is we need double Colossus Hammer. That's the only real pathway to winning on turn two with this deck. So it's actually pretty unlikely that we have the exact hand that gives us a turn two kill. But... <laughs> <laughs> this time we had it, and uh, wow, that felt good. Opponent played a Serum Visions, and then died to a 2022 Ornithopter. <laughs> oh, magic is great. Hammer time is, uh, <laughs> is also great. All right, let's do that again. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are hammering away in modern. Hmm. Huh. This hand. Probably going to mulligan it. So we can get a hammer, but we don't really have a creature or a way to equip. I guess we have Ink Moth, but we have no way to equip. We're going to mulligan. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Well, I mean, this looks like a turn two hammer hand if nothing goes uh, horribly awry. Now we'll keep. We will put Memnite to the bottom. All right. Well, I mean, hammer, bobble, ornithopter. Land, hammer, bobble, Ornithopter, go. Come on, no Thought Seizes, no Lightning Bolts. Oh boy, it's a Thought Seize deck. Well, if we lose this Pure Steel Paladin, then all of a sudden we're doing nothing. Like, literal nothing. Over on Doom, untapped. Oh, it's an, okay, it's a Nakatl. That's encouraging. Well, now we're doing something. Silent Clearing, Pure Steel Paladin. Hammer up, attack you for 10. And, um, might as well move over the hammer. Pass the turn. Okay. Now what, opponent? <laughs> Scoops it up. <laughs> oh, this deck's awesome. Oh, boy. Oh, dear, is this deck wonderful. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, I think our opponent's playing a... Like a, what they used to call Suicide Zoo style deck. Like a, a Death Shadow life loss, but not like Rakdos Death Shadow. More of a, a Zoo style Death Shadow deck. Um, hmm. So there's probably going to be a lot of uh, discard spells. Oriai Champion could be worth considering as a threat that dodges most of our opponent's removal. And is good at blocking Death Shadows. Let's go up two Oriac Champions and two Paths. Go down two Springleaf Drums. Uh, geez, what do we got? So the hard part about this sideboarding, maybe we go down the Cranial Planing. The hard part about this sideboarding is we also need enough artifacts to turn on Pure Steel. So there is a risk that if we just like take out all of our Springleaf Drums, then we could leave ourselves in a position where we can't get to three artifacts for Pure Steel. I guess we can go down to one Springleaf Drum. Try it like that. I do think Oriac Champion is worth it, though. Blocks for days and potentially swings past a decent amount of our opponent's stuff. Hmm. I think we actually keep this. This is not a super fast hand, but we do have a path. And we also have an Ink Moth. So I think, I think what we're mostly trying to set up here is getting our opponent with, with an Ink Moth after hmm, Stone Forging up a hammer we'll play snow covered planes we still are going to need a way to equip it yeah i don't think we play anything we can't <clears throat> yeah let's just wait we can't draw a hammer and a way to equip next turn so we don't need to run out mem Knight. if there's a chance you can get a hammer on something i think you got to play the mem Knight, but there's not any possible way that happens i guess we could like crack the bobble and try to draw two but that seems like a long shot and we kind of want the artifact in case we draw a pure steel then we're gonna want ink moth double artifact to uh, equip for our opponent another swift spear 
opponent gets in hits us. Uh, do we want to path one of these? I guess we can hmm, wait. Maybe this isn't even a Death Shadow deck. Well, Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Snow Covered Plains. Stone Forge. Uh, let's take Hammer for now. Pass the turn. I mean, we are in a position where we can take a lot of damage if our opponent has a decent hand here. Opponent, combat. Hits us. Alright, down to 14. That's fine. Cigar to Zade, maybe? Mismatch Stone Forge. Uh, well, play Ink Moth. Play another Stone Forge. Grab Shadow Sphere. Play Mishra's Bobble. Play Memnite. And yeah, I guess we doink you for one with Stone Forge. <laughs> Backup plan Stone Forge beatdowns with no equipments. <laughs> The Shadow Sphere does feel helpful. Like, gaining back a bit of life seems somewhat relevant. Opponent gets a Blood Crypt. Lingering Souls to make a bunch of blockers. I don't know what our opponent's deck's doing, honestly. Boy, if we can draw a way to equip a hammer, ugh, we're suddenly in really good shape. Opponent. Attacks, attacks. Well, alright, let's path. Wow, no basics to get. We'll take the two. Come on, Pure Steel or Cigar to Zade. Either one, either one. Unearth. Now, so I guess we play Shadow Sphere, equip Shadow Sphere, play Marsh Flats, get in with Stone Forge, gain back a bit of life, and I guess we're going to crack this bobble this turn, finally. I mean, because we are a way to equip Hammer away from potentially just winning. Scourge of the Skyclaves, alright, that's big and scary. Opponent hits us, well, let's crack the bobble, opponent's drawn a land, sure. We drop to 12, we drop to 11, this thing's getting massive. Another path would also be fine. I'll get a Godless Shrine, tapped. Untap. Draw two. Huh. I'll play Stoneforge Mystic. Get another hammer. Silent Clearing, go. Oh, we haven't found a way to get a hammer on anything. If they can double strike this Scourge of the Skyclaves, then we are dead. Cracks Bloodstained Mire. Godless Shrine, untap, down to eight. Okay, so this is a Death Shadow Zoo deck. Lingering Souls returns. Opponent. Well, no double strike, please. We will block with Stoneforge Mystic. All right, stay alive. Well, Crack Silent Clearing, draw a card. Path is decent. That gets rid of the Scourge, at least. All right, untap. So many <laughs> So many hammers, so few ways to equip the hammers. Uh, okay, so, how do we want to do this? So I think we take Luris, get Luris, play Silent Clearing, pass the turn. Still a little bit worried, our opponent has a lot of flyers, and we're not gaining back any life this turn, although we'd only be gaining two life anyway, so it's not even a huge amount of life that we would gain if we equip the Shadow Sphere. Luris gives us a lot more long game value, like we can start getting back this Bobble to, we just need to draw like a Pure Steel. If we can draw Pure Steel or Cigar to Zade, there's a decent chance we can win immediately. Opponent, getting in with the Flyers and the Scourge. Now we'll block the Scourge. And do we want to path it? Yeah, let's path it. Get rid of the Scourge. Drop to seven. Oh no, that's so many Flyers. Okay. All right, we need this very quickly. Oh, that's a Cigar to Zade. Okay. Oh, but what if our opponent has Lightning Bolt or Fatal Push? Well, play Cigar to Zade. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Fatal Push beats us, doesn't it? Well, let's equip Shadow Sphere. Go to combat. Attack. 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 About it. Blocks. Blocks. Well, we will Colossus Hammer on Stoneforge Mystic. All right, go up to nine. Play it safe and careful. Not dead to a lightning bolt. About it. Cycle Street Wraith. Double Bolt would get us. Oh, no. I mean, the thing is, Bolt would have blown out putting a, putting a hammer on Memnite anyway. Wow. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it wouldn't have 
it wouldn't have mattered what we did there, honestly. Like, if we went for the hammer, then our opponent just bolts to Mem Knight, and then we gain zero life, and we die anyway. So, it wouldn't really have made a difference. Do we want Forge Tenders, too? Probably. Maybe we go down the Unners. Yeah, let's go down the Unners. Bring in more protection stuff. We saw a lot of red creatures. All right, well, we're on the play. We could also just have a nice turn to win. We would accept that. Ooh. Hmm. All right, well, we keep this. This hand's not super fast, but it can get us where we're trying to go. One artifact, two artifact, three artifact. We shall see. Hopefully our opponent does not have too many, uh, too many thought seizes. We haven't seen much discard. We've seen removal, but not much discard. Yes, and it seems like it's going to be hard to win super quickly, but it does feel like it has a decent amount of redundancy. No, nope, Marsh Flats, go. Uh, boot it. Cycle Street Wraith. Verdant Catacombs. Cracks Verdant Catacombs. Blood Crip, 15. Oh, boy. All right, so our opponent had... The traditional Death Shadow start takes our Stone Forge. Well, we will crack. Get a Godless Shrine. Untap. Cheap Artifact. Ink Moth. Oh, play a land and Pure Steel. Go. Opponent. Bolts the Pure Steel. Wooded Foothills. Cracks it. Ooh. So opponents had a really good start for this matchup. Wild Nicotl. Oh, well, Marsh Flats. Crack it. Snow Covered Plains. Pure Steel. Colossus Hammer. Please be out of removal finally. Yes, we will draw a card. Oh, Steel Shaper's Gift, sure. We really need this pure steel to live. We've gone through two interactive spells so far. Oh dear. All right, opponent kills it. Godless Shrine tapped. Hits us. Oh, well, let's lure us. Actually, let's Ink Moth lure us. Steel Shaper's Gift for Shadow Sphere past the turn. Oh, there's the Scourge, though. Hmm, that's not great. Hits us, grows the Scourge. Stoneforge. Now play the land. Play Lurus. Play Stoneforge. Oh no, I think we're going to lose. Get a hand. I mean, if they have the double strike spell, this is just going to kill us. Pass the turn. Come on, no battle rages. Hand can't be that good. Oh, it can, can it? Well, we will block. All right, no double strike. L live Luris? Another Scourge. Well, okay. We will cast Pure Steel Paladin. Cast Shadow Sphere. Draw a card. Ornithopter. And opponent scoops it up. Whoo! Luris and Pure Steel come through. So what's going to happen there is we can get the hammer on our Luris. That, even though our opponent can, uh, can block it, it's going to gain us so much life that it's going to get rid of both of the Scourge of the Skyclaves and also make it so our opponent can't win. Wow. Our opponent had the good hand, too. Like, they had the Thought Seize in two removal spells. And that, I guess, shows the resilience of this deck. Like, that's a big difference from the earlier builds, where we were really all in on, like, Killian turn two, but if things go wrong, it was really hard for us to rebuild. This deck has some rebuilding, but, like, we have a fuller hand than our opponent. We're drawing cards from our equipment. We're equipping for free. And, uh, yeah, hammer time. <laughs> sweet, sweet. <laughs> All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are doing some more uh, hammering. Pure steel hammer time. The new and improved and maybe top tier of all things. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed two years ago <laughs> when we were budget magicking <laughs> turn two hammer kills that uh, that people would actually develop the deck into something that was real? Uh, oh, this hand actually seems pretty good we will keep mm, 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 mm. oh the question is what are we putting to the bottom so if we put yeah i guess we can probably put silent clearing to the bottom i think it's a little risky because this means we don't have double white for pure steel without spring leaf drum and if our opponent can thought seize slash kill mem knight or spring leaf drum then uh, we might have mana issues, but this is our most explosive van. One artifact, two artifact, hammer, three artifact, kill you, pure steel. That's a plan anyway. We'll see. We'll see if it comes together the way we're hoping. We are on the draw. Opponent. Ooh, oops, all spelling. Hmm. How does this? Oh, we draw the hammer. Good God. Uh, okay, so. Ink Moth Nexus. Spring Leaf Drum. Mem Knight. Colossus Hammer. 
go. Oh, we're one mana short from playing pure steel and equipping an ink moth. This is just a straight up race, I think. I mean, we are playing modern, so duh. Bonnet, tap land passes, shadow sphere. Oh, so we have to tap this to play pure steel. I'll play silent clearing. I guess we gotta hope we get one more turn. Play Pure Steel. Play Shadow Sphere. Draw a card. Play Bobble. Equip. Equip. All right, are we dead? That is always the question against these no land decks. We should be able to win next turn if we're not dead. Seagate Reborn. Oh, untapped. We did not want to see untapped. That's a bad sign. Metamorphose. I mean, if it's oops all spells, they can theoretically... Yeah. Oh, jeez, um. No! Oh, all right. Well, yeah. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Well, opponent was faster than we were. We had a... <laughs> we were on the draw, essentially. That is a... That is the TLDR. We were on the draw. So we'll bring in Thawseys. We'll bring in Pithing Needle. We'll go down Cranial Plating. We'll go down a spring leaf drum, a spring leaf drum, and actually the unearths seem pretty bad. Our opponent's not killing our stuff. Let's go down the unearths. Keep three spring leaves. Run it like that. I mean, we had the kill the next turn, but our opponent won the die roll, and they had double, triple ritual hand, so they actually got to seven mana on turn three, and yeah. Well... Welcome to Modern. Sometimes your unfair thing is just slightly less unfair than your opponent's unfair thing. Wow. This is the creature-free nut draw. I don't know if we can keep this, though. We have two hammers, three hammers, really. We just don't have a creature to put them on. We could wait and hope that we draw a creature. Hmm, <laughs> let's mulligan. Ha. Huh. Oh, oh, this hand. I don't know if this is better. This hand, we have creatures for days. We can get hammers for days. We have no way to equip and no black mana for thought seas. Oh, one more. One more. Still no black mana. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to play the control game, I guess. We will put Ornithopter. Oh, this hand is so weird. This is not normally what you want your hammer time hands to look like. Not even close. I don't thought sees you. This is a weird, 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 weird hand. Um, We will take Recross Pass. Pass the turn. Opponent. Tap land. Passes. Oh, Shadow Sphere, eh? Well, we will thought seize you. Take. Are we going to lose to Simeon Spirit Guides? That seems so unlikely, but maybe. Hmm. I'll take a Spirit Guide. Planes. Pithing Needle. <laughs> I don't know about Hammer Time Control. I don't know if this is actually a <laughs> a realistic plan for winning a game. We were on the Mulda 5, though, so we didn't really have much of a choice. We had two very not great hands. Well, the control game plan continues. <laughs> oh, this draw's so weird. Seagate Reborn. Oh, no, did they draw another Recross Pass? If they can stack their deck with Recross Pass. Okay, just a Simeon Spirit Guide. Well, play a Bobble. Pass the turn. Oh, so awkward. So uh, We're going to lose to this monkey, aren't we? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is like the weirdest draw you can imagine. We drew all four of our sideboard cards. And I don't know if that's actually going to be helpful. Opponent. It says for two. Well, we will crack a bobble. Po oh, no! Recross passes on top. Oh, we're going to lose. We're going to lose for sure. Well, we get to draw two. I guess we stone forge Mystic. To get a Colossus Hammer. Play Mishra's Bobble. Oh, no, no, no. Well, this is why Hammer Time is not a control deck. <laughs> so awkward opponent. I mean, I assume they can stack their deck with ways to kill the Pithing Needles. That's what I'm expecting. Like, now that we know they're drawing this recross pass, that means they get to stack their deck however they want to. And... I assume that they have, like, some answer to Pithy Needle, a Braids or something. So they can just go, like, a Braid, a Braid, and then the Belcher. 
and then win the game. And it's going to be hard to stop because part of the power of recross pass, as weird as it sounds, is the cards are going to be on the top of our opponent's deck, so it's not like we can interact with them. Although, I guess we already have spent both thought seizes, so. Huh. Yeah, that is not what we were hoping to for our opponent to reveal with that uh, bobble. Oh, boat it. Well, I guess we're just getting out goldfished here. On the Moldify, but still. Maybe we should have kept the first hand and just hope that we, uh, we drew into creatures. That is a thing we could have done. Seagate Reborn. I mean, I guess it's also theoretically possible that our opponent doesn't have two answers to Pithy Needle. That seems very unlikely, but... Oh, bootage. Opponent's really thinking about this. Like, super hard. Alright. Opponent does decide to recross pass. So they get to stack their deck however they want to. Let's see what answers they have. Wait, do they not have a way to kill artifacts? They have one nature's claim. Two nature... Uh, so they can go two nature's claims to the top? Or can they set up to win immediately? Oh, they probably... Well, no, probably not. Maybe. Maybe they can, like, wheel into rituals, two nature's claims, manamorphos... Belcher Iron Craig feet? Is it possible? Do they have enough mana to do that? Maybe. It's supposed to be double green. They play a land. Double green. Kill, kill. Oh, yeah. I think they actually can just beat us next turn. And I don't think there's anything we can draw that stops this. Do they have exactly two nature's claims, too? Planes on top. Well, I guess we don't want that. No, we will bobble. Yeah, there's a wheel on top. So we should just be dead now. Ugh. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Well, they can draw a card. No way to equip. I mean, I guess we make him show it, but we are dead. I mean, we are just, we are just super, super dead. Well, pass the turn. So yeah, they, they should be able to set up a Reforge the Soul plan that just kills both Pithy Needles and also... Wow, do they have exactly two Nature's Claims? I think they do. Well, I mean, we'll put a hammer into play. Not that it actually is going to make a difference here, because we are just immediately dead. Reforge the soul. Opponent going to cast it. New hands all around. We finally find a pure steel, but... I believe we are just immediately dead if our opponent did this right. Metamorphose. I mean, we'll see. If they're trying to kill us across two turns, we have a shot. Nature's claim. Do they have enough mana is the question. Simeon Spirit Guide, Ritual, Ritual, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I think they have exactly enough cards and enough mana. Ritual, Iron Craig Feet, Belcher, yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, that is, it. Uh, sure. Ugh. I actually don't think this is that bad of a matchup, but, uh, our opponent had their ideal draw in game one with the winning the die roll and winning on turn three when we could win the next turn and then this game we just had uh the mulligans into this control hand but our opponent had the right cards to beat it ah well hey guess you can't win them all sad 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 all right much room on nothing time we are pure steel hammer timing in modern and this sounds pretty meh. Lots of lands. No, uh, I mean, we get an equipment with Stoneforge, but no no hammer. No way to equip hammer. So we need multiple pieces. Probably just going to mulligan this. I'm going to draw again. Uh, yeah, we'll mulligan. Oh, boy. Memnite Tron. Ay, 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 ay. That first hand's looking kind of good now. Well, I guess this one we're keeping. Although it's not great. We will put Colossus Hammer and Unearth to the bottom. Ugh. Ay, 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 ay. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Cavern of Souls on Snake. Ugh. All right. So, prime time time. Um, hmm. I'll play the Plains. Play the Memnite. Play the Bobble. Pass the turn. Probably going to crack the bobble, even though it puts us down a card for a potential pure steel equip. But down an artifact. 
opponent going to bounce land. They're in pretty good shape, though, because they have uh, the ability to put a land back into play. Well, crack the bobble. Crumbling Vestige. Well, we get to draw two more Stone Forges. Oh, play Moth. Play a Stone Forge. Grab a hammer. Oh, the problem is we can't actually win next turn, no matter what we do. And that's giving our opponent a lot of time to get a Primeval Titan down. Bonant, Cavern. On Nymph. Oh, all right. So I assume that means Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. Yeah. Well, we are running out of time to win this game. Slayer Stronghold. So this does mean that Primeval Titan can come down next turn, potentially. Well, crack the bobble. Oh, Primeval Titan on top. Ugh, bobble. Oh, no. No, 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 no. So many lands. Well, we will Stoneforge Mystic. I mean, we did lose the die roll, and we are on the Mold of Five. All of those things are bad news. Play the land, play a bobble. Uh, do we play a hammer? Hmm. Well, let's bobble ourselves and see what we're going to draw. A useless land. Huh. So if we draw a pure steel, they're just going to chomp. Yeah, I think we're... I think we're in the death area now. Since we know this prime time's coming. Crumbling Vestige... We draw another land. Unfortunately, we're not good at winning die rolls this league. Or at least the last couple matches. Uh, but it's a very goldfishy modern format. <laughs> it's goldfish decks and then... Oh, they don't have the land. That's interesting. Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> no. Well, silent clearing. Crack it. Pass the turn. Does our opponent draw land? We know they got the prime time. And that can most likely get Valakuts and just wrath our board and mean we can't win. Okay, Amulet. And, all right, going to grow the Dryad. Sure. Opponent hits us. We will take it. Well, Marsh Flats. Crack Marsh Flats. Get a Snow-Covered Plains. Pure Steel Paladin. Colossus Hammer. Draw a card. Wow, so many lands. Colossus Hammer. Draw a card. Now we find Cigar to Zade. Well, equip. Equip. Attack. I mean, the question's going to be, does our opponent find a land for Primeval Titan? Opponent blocks. Well, we will equip. Oh, that was, that was a bit of a punt. Opponent hits a land for Primeval Titan. Oh yeah, we we actually punted that, didn't we? Ouch. That was uh that was a smidge. A smidge brutal. I don't know if it would have mattered since our opponent top decked the land anyway. I don't think it does. But that was definitely a mistake. Yeah, we should have we should have moved the other hammer. Hmm. Well, gotta give you something to yell at me about in the comments. Opponent. Double Valica. And a bounce land for more Valakuts. So our out here is, our out here is we need to top deck exactly Colossus Hammer. Oh no, we're dead. Never mind. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. That untaps, so we're dead. All right, so uh, our pun didn't actually make even the tiniest bit of difference. Oh, we just want to race this deck. I think that's it. I don't think we want to try to interact. I think we just want to race. Which might mean we don't change anything. The honors probably aren't very good. Maybe we go two thought seizes. Run it like that. I mean, we just we get to play it first this time. Well, I'm glad our punt didn't matter. We get to play first this time. And we're about due for just a, a really good draw. We haven't had really good draws in a in a while. Hmm. Hammers for days, no ways to equip. Well, okay. This we will keep. We will put cranial plating to the bottom. <laughs> this hand's not bad. We can't ink moth until turn three, right? Because we got to activate it. Well, we will ornithopter, ink moth, springleaf drum, steel shaper's gift, 
for Colossus Hammer. Go. Well, let's see. Opponent plays a Forest and a Amulet. Hopefully we're fast enough this time. So we get to play a Memnite. Play Pure Steel Paladin. Colossus Hammer. Draw a card. Equip to Ornithopter. Hit you for 10. And then move this to Pure Steel. Which is what we were trying to do last game when we <laughs> killed our own Memnite. All right. Well, that was the kind of start we were hoping for. An opponent! Yeah, I mean, that is the upside of being on the play. Being on the play, this deck can get some nigh unbeatable draws. Even if our opponent managed to play a blocker, we have the mana that we can stoneforge for a hammer and have two lethal attackers next turn. So, yeah, those are the kind of draws our deck wants. Those are, those are the ones. Those are the ones. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, run it back. Can we do it on the draw? Can we do it on the draw? That is the question. Now, Luris revealed. Ooh, ooh, okay. All right, well, we'll keep this. This is like a, what, turn three potential kill? Oh, hopefully it's good enough. We will keep. Opponent, forest, and... Ooh, passes? Okay, we like the passing. We'll play snow-covered planes. Play bobble. Play bobble. Play ornithopter. Cigar to aid. Um, yeah, I guess we see what they're drawing. Drawing a bounce land, sure. Uh, about it. So we could just hammer up the Ornithopter next turn. We can also try to set up this Ink Moth kill. Ooh, all right, Ink Moth kill's gonna be tougher. Explosives on zero. Oh, opponent has all the, all the answers, all right. Well, we will bobble. Ooh, Amulet on top. Well, we get to draw two. Well, I think we just play Ink Moth, Stoneforge get a hmm yeah get a hammer uh send a message <laughs> simian spirit guide simian spirit guide clauses hammer clauses hammer dead <laughs> phone it untaps oh uh, well this is interesting in theory we can win with this stone forge i mean we might have this we might actually have this like if our opponent Leaves up their mana for Engineer Explosives and Ghost Quarter. We can Colossus Hammer the Stoneforge. If our opponent does not leave up Ghost Quarter and Engineered Explosives, we can go for Ornithopter or Memnite. This is all assuming Sigarda's Aid lives. If Sigarda's Aid gets blown up somehow, then, then life becomes much more questionable. Okay, Amulet. Bounce Land. Whoo. All right. Well, what do they got? Gonna... Add some mana. Oh, no! No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's the nightmare. That is the nightmare. I'll play a land. Get Lurus, but I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to be fast enough now. Our opponent's got their full setup. Oh, that Reclamation Sage is so, so bad for us. Oh, no. Opponent's got the control hand with the amulet. Explosives, Ghost Quarter, and Rex Age. That is... That is the hand our opponent wants against our deck, I think. Oh, no. Oh, that was brutal. That was so brutal. Snow-covered forest. Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. Windswept Heath. Opponent passes. Hmm. Well, play Cigar to Aid. Play Silent Clearing. Is there any way we can win here? I don't think so. So I guess the question is going to be, does our opponent have Primeval Titan in hand? And if we spend Colossus Hammer, we can't re-equip. One, two, three, four, five. So this could kill Ornithopter. We can just Lurus, but then the problem is... Maybe that's our best plan, is just not to go for anything this turn? This is actually, like, a really interesting, really interesting situation. This dies to Ghost Quarter. Ornithopter dies to Explosives. This gets blocked for not much value. We could make them spend the Ghost Quarter. You know what? I think we just Lurus. Play Lurus. Play a Bobble. Pass the turn. Oh, please, no dying. No, no Titan. No Titan, please. 
Well, let's take a peek. Cavern of Souls. All right, well, do they have the Titan? Cavern on Giant. And they have it. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, I think this is this is game now. So opponent gets the Summoner's Pact. They get to get the Primeval Titan. The Primeval Titan can get Valakut Bounce Land. That lets our opponent play Ghost Quarter untapped again to be able to answer the Ink Moth Nexus. And then I think that's just game. They can also haste in the Primeval Titan to make things even worse. Well, we'll see. Maybe our opponent misplays somehow, but I'm pretty sure this is just game. Wow. Well, in this case, we lost the die roll, and our opponent just had absolutely insane hand here in game three. That is, I think, as good as our opponent's hand can be, in all honesty. Opponent, going to get Valakuts, I assume. Valakut, Field of the Dead. Kills Luris. Wait, do we, do we live? Make zombies. Shoots down our board. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. Windswept teeth. Wait, do we get to win this? Do we get to win this? No, because we lose flying. Oh. Yeah, that fetch land beats us. And there's not any way around it, right? I don't think so. The losing flying is the problem. Yeah, so they... that fe Wow. Even after all that, we were so close. Oh! Opponent punted! I think we might... Oh, my goodness. Oh, are we going to win this? They had to do it before before blocks. Unless their last card is like a lightning bolt. Oh my goodness, are we gonna, oh my goodness. Well, is this happening? Okay. I think our opponent already chose not to block. Hits us to four, hammer, equip. Oh my God, it, oh, 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 the hidden mode, the hidden, opponent had us too. Oh my goodness, we should not have won that. Wow. So, okay, so all my rambling makes, sense here what uh what happened is colossus hammer makes a creature lose flying so our opponent if they like as soon as we activate this ink moth like beginning of combat crack their fetch land we can save it like we did there with our second colossus hammer but it's gonna lose flying and it doesn't have trample so that our opponent can just chump with a zombie token and kill us on the backswing i don't know if our maybe our opponent didn't see that line i'm not exactly sure what happened but because they waited until after blocks were already gone and they had already decided not to block because we had a flyer to try to kill the ink moth that let us <laughs> that let us take it out and i guess i mean that is an example of of why uh why you shouldn't scoop early because you never know what your opponent sees and what your opponent doesn't see and this was a case that I could see that we had no pathway to winning, uh, but our opponent did not see that we had no pathway to winning, and uh, we we got the win. <laughs> okay, well, that wasn't a pretty win, but it's a win. Sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. The new and updated pure steel hammer time, and oh, boy, this is tempting. All we're missing is a hammer. We got the ornithopters. We got a cigar to Zade. Worst case, I guess we can cranial plating ornithopter. That's not game winning but it's a it's a thing we can do i think we're gonna try this we are missing one important piece well i mean i guess we gotta run up that ornithopters on the off chance that we uh we just top deck a hammer worst case i mean we can throw a plating on them and see what happens fire bluff can opponent passes well uh hmm a bolt would get us wouldn't it oh do we just go for it well steel shaper's gift get a Colossus Hammer. Snow Covered Plains. I mean, I think we gotta go for it. Attack. Yeah, I mean, we, we're the hammer type deck. We can't not go for it on turn two because our opponent could have Lightning Bolt. Like, yeah, opponent does have the Bolt. Sure. So opponent dodges, dodges round one. We could also draw a Pure Seal, which would be decent. Uh, boot it. I don't think you can play this deck afraid. You gotta go for it. Oh, if this is, well, let's see what they're playing. 
Oh boy, is it Storm? Oh, Storm and also randomly having the lightning bolt. Now that's, oh, okay, that makes sense. It's actually a prowess deck. Pona hits us, sure. I'll well, play Memnite. Marsh Flats, crack Marsh Flats. Snow-covered plains, grab Luris. I mean, we could cranial plating, but I don't think the cranial plating line is, we're only hitting for like three, which is not super exciting. Scalding Tarn. The problem is our opponent almost certainly has a lot of ways to kill our creatures. Now, we can't feel too bad about the Lightning Bolt in this case. Another Sprite Dragon. Opponent goes attacking. Hits us. No blocks. Not worth losing this for a two for one. And light up the stage. Grows the Dorks. Draw some cards. Burst Lightnings and kill the Lurus. Hmm. Oh, play Spring Leaf Drum. Cranial Plating. Equip to Memnite. Hitch it for six. Oh, no! No! Gosh! Oh, no! Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, opponent seems prepared for the Memnites. Gunshot! Oh, gut shot. Mountain for our opponent. Uh-huh. Gets it, hits us. Yeah, this might be a tough matchup. Opponent just has so many answers. Down to ten. Wow, they're going to let the burst lightning go to waste. Well, please don't have a counter. Luris. Ornithopter. And Springleaf Drum. Go. Uh, about it. Eyelet. Cracks it. Swift Spear. And, okay, Sprite Dragon. They can't have another gut shot, right? That's just not a possibility. I mean, anything's possible, but we're going to block block. Oh, all right, no gut shot. I mean, the good news is we get to gain back a lot of life with this Lurus. And we are kind of drawing live to a hammer. Ooh. Stoneforge gets a hammer. Hammer. On Lurus, yes. Memnite, Springleaf Drum, equip cranial plating on Lurus. Oh, 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 we got gush shot, but we still pieced it together. Okay. <laughs> We're always a hammer away from just winning with this deck, it feels like. Well, the good news is we get to bring in Burn to Forge Tenders. We get to bring in Oriok Champions, which I think are a pretty good sign that this probably is not the best matchup, uh, that we have all these cards for the matchup. But Pro Red is super, uh, super helpful. And then possibly two paths, if we can find room. Question's going to be, what do we go down? And I think the answer is going to be two Unners. And then, hmm, maybe like two Springleaf Drums. Uh, maybe we go down all the Springleaf Drums. The only concern is this might make our pure steel too weak but all right let's uh let's try it i mean we have two protection from white creatures with or from red creatures which are very helpful well okay this doesn't have any sideboard cards however it does have potentially a pretty fast colossus hammer bonnet steam vents and passes wow two colossus hammers uh so we will play mishra's bobble play mem knight Marsh Flats, Crack It, Snow Covered Plains, Colossus Hammer, Go, Uphoot It, Alright, Bolts of Mem Knight, Seamens Untapped, Sprite Dragon, Oh, we are an artifact short from equipping, which is awkward, so many hammers, um, well that's Steel Shaper's Gift, for Shadow Sphere, play Silent Clearing, play Shadow Sphere, and hope our opponent taps down slash out. I mean, if we can get all this stuff on a pure steel paladin, we should be good to go. Question's going to be, can we through our opponent's removal? Opponent hits us 15. Light up the stage. Sprite dragon bolt. So we know there's removal. So that means we can't pure steel. Oh, play a bobble. Awkward. This is not, this is not what we were hoping for. Oh, so much removal. 
All right, opponent on dabs. And now I actually really don't like where we're at. I think we're actually in a in a pretty bad spot here. Opponent. Bolts our face. Gross the sprite dragon. Well, let's crack this. Take a peek. Opponent's drawing a land. At least that's good. Path? Memnite. Sprite dragon number two. Tap land. Oh, are we going to be fast enough? Opponent gets in, hits us. Well, crack the bobble, take a peek. The problem is I think we're just dead. No, there's Spire Bluff. We need an Ornithopter, maybe. Hmm. Oh, we're going to be dead to any spell? That's not going to do it. No, play the land. Play the... Ugh, play the Memnite. Play... Yeah, I mean, play Pure Steel. I think we're dead, though. Play Colossus Hammer. Draw a card. Ornithopter? Stoneforge. All right. Well, equip, 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 and die. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need our opponent to have literally all nothing in hand. Not a single spell. Any spell makes us die by pumping sprite dragons. Oh! No way! No way! No way! No way! <laughs> I mean, we knew they were drawing the... <laughs> We knew they were drawing the Spire Bluff for their turn, but their hand must have been two lands. Because <laughs> we are dead to... I mean, I guess it could also be a creature. Well, that's a that's a 4-1. We got got by Belcher, but otherwise... Wow, there were some weird games. We got some insane turn two kills, and now we had just some weird, long, drawn-out hammer-type games. And, uh, well, the kids are feasting. We got a five treasure chests. Five treasure chests to open! Hopefully something good. Ooh, Eidolon. Eidolon might have uh, have some amount of value. I know it did have some amount of value. Does it still, after it was reprinted, have value? I guess we should uh, should look it up. Nessian Boar I don't think is likely to have value. Uh, yes. That is, I think, quite literally free. Eidolon of the Great Revel comes in at... Eh, actually not bad. Uh, Almost seven ticks? Six and a half ticks? Yeah, that's a that's a good chest. Sounds a chest is like two thirty or something. Curse of Stock Prey. More curses would be sweet, but Curse of Stock Prey, not one of the best ones. I guess it can be all right for a, a super aggressive deck, but ooh, Ancestral Vision. I don't actually think this is worth much of anything either anymore, though. Yeah, fifty cents. All right, two more shots. Let's get a, a complete set. A Force Negation. Uh, how about an Underworld Connection? Was very good at Standard in its era, but that era was a while ago. <laughs> One more! Ooh, Obliterator. Oh, uh, Obliterator's sweet historic, but it doesn't do much outside of historic. Still worth a, still worth a dollar, though. Marion and Master are also worth keeping in mind for historic, not so much for modern. Well, ah, I mean, that's uh, the new and improved Hammer Time, and it felt pretty sweet. We had some really interesting games, but that's... Wrap up stuff. Uh, be right back. So what do we learn this week about pure steel hammer time in modern? And overall, the deck felt really good. We went four and one in our league. Our one loss came against Belcher, where essentially our deck can do unfair things, but our opponent was just even more unfair. Game one, we had the turn three kill after losing the die roll. So we were on the draw, but our opponent just had the turn three kill on the play, which is a uh, pretty fast, a little too fast for our deck in that sense. And then at game two, we did a lot of mulliganing and drew all these like control cards and never really assembled any of our aggressive stuff. So that was a pretty legit legitimate loss and I think that is a tiny bit of a concern with this build of hammer time we're probably a tiny bit weaker against combo because we're very 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 less likely to be able to win on turn two I think we had one turn two win where we just had double Colossus hammer and just one on turn two we had one legitimate turn two win in our entire league we're really good at winning like turn three turn four and we do get the upside of being able to play this late game a game that the original builds couldn't play we're not a glass cannon like the original builds of hammer time instead of being all in on like the turn two kill yeah maybe sometimes we get a turn two kill more often we get a turn three turn four kill and we can go late against control in mid-range and don't just lose to a thought seize or a removal spell which is a huge upside so that was our one loss we also got one win that we probably shouldn't have gotten where uh, our opponent did have us dead to rights with Valica and field of the dead and primeval titan in the amulet titan deck but 
we played it out. We didn't scoop, even though we could see that we had no way of winning the game. We decided to play it out, see maybe if our opponent made a mistake, and our opponent made a mistake with when they valicated our creature, allowing us to get around it with Colossus Hammer, allowing us to get the hammer on after block so we wouldn't get jump blocked by a zombie, and we were able to steal a win that really, we had no business actually winning, but I guess that's an argument for not scooping early, which I know that's something y'all try to tell me all the time, and I sometimes listen to a little bit but that was a good example of a game where we knew we couldn't win we could see how our opponent had us dead to rights we had no way of actually winning the game but our opponent didn't see it and that's one of the reasons not to scoop early so as far as the deck itself i actually think this deck is really good like legitimately good like i think it might be time for hammer time to be a real top tier legitimate modern deck because this build it solves the problems with the past builds of Hammer Time. If you go back to the early days when you were playing this on Budget Magic and some other builds, Hammer Time was really, really good at killing on turn two. Like, that's what we were trying to do. Mulligan aggressively into, like, Core Duelist, Equip Hammer, one-shot you on turn two. And the results were spectacular. On the other hand, once people kind of figured out the deck and knew, oh, I got to, like, Fatal Push the one drop or I'm going to die on turn two, it got a little bit worse. So, like, the interaction would fizzle our turn two kill. And then because we were so all in on the turn two kills and our like free equip stuff only is good with the combo and some of our other stuff is only really good core duelist like not a great card only really good with the combo because we are so glass cannony our opponent would be able to beat us with removal sometimes this build goes a very opposite direction where sure our turn two kills are not going to happen anywhere near as often as with past builds but we don't need the turn two kills because we have pure steel paladin to draw us cards and move our equipment around we have Luris with bobble to draw us extra cards we have unearth to get back stuff that dies we have a lot of card advantage and the ability to play this long game that we we're completely missing before and i think that is where this deck wants to be rather than being glass cannon turn two kill deck this version of hammer time is like a mm, turn three to four kill deck but a turn three to four kill deck that can go toe to toe with removal heavy mid-range decks go toe to toe with counter spell heavy control decks and actually just grind them out and win on like turn 10 which is something that very very rarely happened with the old versions of the deck and i think that resilience the fact that now we're a deck that's often fast enough to race combo, but also often resilient enough to beat mid-range and control, I think that's what makes Pure Steel Hammer Time into a deck that I think is legitimately good in modern, and I would not be surprised to see more and more people waking up to the power of the archetype. It is time for the Colossus Hammer to really shine in the modern format. So that's Pure Steel Hammer Time. That's our bunch of proof for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.